In this video, my friend Jack and I compare some CW POTA radios. I'll give you the breakdown of the advantages and disadvantages for me and my POTA activation style at my stage in learning CW, which is still a little bit early on. This is a very non-scientific comparison, although we did try to use the same speaker when we were A being radios. We will look at the Elecraft KH1, the QMX by QRP Labs, and the CFT1 by KM4 CFT. I should say I'm interested in these radios for POTA activation, but what we were listening to was mostly a CW contest that was going on that weekend, but it made for a good receiver test to see how these receivers would perform in busy band conditions. We'll start with the CFT-1. This radio covers the same bands as the KH-1. It comes in a kit or you can buy it already built. I'm hearing that this kit is easier to put together than the QMX, which we will talk about. The QMX is a pretty advanced kit. Jack and I both liked this receiver. We like that the memories are easy to access. I like that you have a range of input voltage. On the QMX, it has a hard ceiling at 12 volts, which means you're going to have to buy a different battery for the QMX because usually POTA batteries are quote-unquote 12 volts, but they're actually putting out a little bit more than 13. So I like that you can use any battery that you have laying around on this radio. We liked what we were hearing from this filter. It was doing a good job filtering out the busy band conditions that weekend. A big downfall of this radio is there's no SWR meter. That's something that's kind of expected at this point and probably something you're going to have to add on for peace of mind. Even if you're using a resonant antenna, it's good to know that it's not coupling to the tree or there's not something weird going on in a connection, an SWR meter is really needed in this kind of a field radio. Now, I am still learning CW, so I like a CW decoder. As a backup, I like to be able to glance down and make sure that I heard what I thought I heard. This wasn't an issue for Jack. He's a more advanced CW operator, so the lack of CW decode did not bother him. And no tuner at this level of a sort of pocket radio uh, tuner is not really expected. All right, let's listen to some AB examples of this radio and the other two. Next, we'll look at the QMX. This is the cheapest radio by far of the three, and you get an extra band. This is a six bander instead of a five bander. I was joking with Jack that if you move the decimal point on the QMX, you get a KH1. But of course, KH1 has a lot more stuff in it. We both thought that the QMX had a punchier receiver. The CFT1 seemed to have more nuance in the receiver and the QMX seemed to have a punchier signal forward kind of a receiver. This radio does include an SWR meter and the CW decoder, which I liked. The 300 Hertz filter was comparable to the 350 of the CFT-1. The downsides of this radio is again that hard ceiling at 12 volts, so you have to be careful with that. There's no tuner, which you wouldn't expect at this price level or size. But this is a more difficult kit to put together. This is an advanced 
kit to put together. They sell them assembled, but there's currently a four month wait on the assembled radios. So let's listen to a bit more of the QMX. Okay, switch this on. That's not bad. It's a different tone. It's pretty quiet. This one seems more sensitive, doesn't it? Lastly, let's look at the KH1. Now the KH1 is really a different animal with a different price tag. It has the auto tuner included. There's an internal battery. There's an internal battery charger. Of course, it has an SWR meter. It's got the CWD code. It has the possibility of pedestrian mobile with a whip. You can add Elecraft's 20 and 40 meter coils onto the top of it for pedestrian mobile. It has a small key that can be stored in the bottom of the radio. So it's really an all-in-one, put it in your pocket, HF handheld. We did notice on the busy band conditions that the narrow filter was a little bit wide. Elecraft claims 300 to 500 hertz. We thought it might have been closer to 600. And a pet peeve of mine about this radio is that you can only change the CW speed in even increments. Like I said earlier, I'm still new to CW. I'm sending it 17 words per minute right now. That's where I'm comfortable. 16 feels slow. 18 feels too fast for me right now. So it's a little bit annoying that the speed only changes in even increments. Let's listen to this one next to the CFT1. All right, let's go back and forth just a couple more times without us talking. You want a point? He's at. Uh... 
It's about 600 hertz away. Uh huh. And we hear them. Uh huh. 600 hertz away. It's pretty strong. Do you have both displays on the video? Yeah. So you can see the frequencies. Of yeah. Go. I've been using this one for, I've been using both these, but this one I've been using really, really soft for three weeks. I haven't turned the 7610 on since I got that. <laughs> Makes you wonder. It's got a good receiver. Like with most things, all three radios had trade-offs. The CFT-1 doesn't have an SWR meter or the CWD code. The QMX is a little bit more difficult to get your hands on, and it has that hard ceiling at 12 volts. And the KH1 had a little bit wider filter than the other two, and the key speed only changes in even increments. Hopefully the comparisons were helpful, and thanks to Jack for his expertise and willingness to bring some radios out to compare.